Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva. We're very pleased to be joined today by Kevin Butler, who is from the University of Florida, and he's also part of the security work stream for the Fiji Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group. Kevin, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Now, thanks for joining us here. We're now looking at a, a Fiji security clinic, which is what's happening in the next uh, few days. And, uh, and you're here as part of the, the Fiji Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group, which has developed a security assurance framework for DFS or digital financial services providers. Um, I wanted to ask you, what's the main objective of the security assurance framework? Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about it and, and why is it needed? Absolutely, sure. So the uh, security assurance framework is designed to uh, be used by various stakeholders throughout the digital financial services ecosystem. This is everybody from um, customers to uh, uh, mobile network operators to DFS providers to even third-party providers who interface with uh, the financial system. So really understanding what the, uh, wh what the ecosystem looks like, uh, what are the, uh, and uh, imp importantly, what are the security threats and the vulnerabilities that are faced uh, by each of those individual stakeholders within the uh, entire ecosystem. Now the goal of the document was to uh, uh, go into uh, some detail in terms of what those threats, uh, risks, and vulnerabilities are, and to provide uh, tangible ways in which each of those stakeholders could provide controls or mitigations for each of these threats and vulnerabilities. So without being overly prescriptive, uh, we wanted to um, really capture what are the fundamental issues that were at play and have a uh, document that would provide some tangible means by which um, uh, these issues could be, could be dealt with. Can you let us into a couple of those? Sure, so as an example, uh, we, uh, we structured the document largely around the types of threats that, uh, that, that the ecosystem faces, things like hijacking of accounts uh, by adversaries or uh, threats from insiders to the system. Uh, so we would uh, look at those, uh, those threats from the perspective of uh, a variety of uh, stakeholders, whoever would be most affected by those particular threats, uh, and uh, categorizing um, the vulnerabilities that will lead to those threats uh, in terms of the uh, ITU X805 uh, se um, uh, security um, uh, variables. And we, would, uh, and, and we would provide some specific uh, instances of what you could do specifically based on a threat. So for example, uh, when it comes to the insider threat, uh, things like robust access control uh, and authentication metrics and uh, logging and audit, uh, all of those are important. And so depending on who you are in the ecosystem, uh, the uh, controls that we would suggest would be uh, different. So it's meant to be something that would be immediately useful to a regulator or to uh, an MNO or mobile network operator um, who is looking to deploy or maintain a DFS um, a service. What about the stakeholders on the other side of the coin? What about the, the users? Uh, what should they be worried about most? Sure, so that's a, that's a great question because really the, uh, the, the viability of DFS really relies on the confidence of users. And so this is a, it's really important uh, for users to understand uh, how they're, uh, you know, what, the, what, what are the security risks that they face so that they can be confident that uh, their, their data is being handled securely. So there are a number of, uh, of, of um, uh, things that can be done uh, for users in terms of uh, how the applications themselves are structured, the security practices being used there, and things that MNOs can do, um, uh, and DFS providers to uh, assure that uh, uh, users are, uh, are, are using the safest uh, infrastructure for conducting uh, DFS transactions. So not going through unsecure networks and that kind of thing? E exactly, yes. Uh, the, the, the way that you, uh, that you access the network, uh, the quality of the, uh, the security that's used to set up your communications between the user and their mobile device and uh, the DFS provider, um, ensuring that the device itself hasn't been um, uh, loaded with malware as a, as a high integrity device, those sorts of things that a provider can do to make sure that uh, their customers are safe. What about applications? What's, uh, the what are the best practices for application security that's being recommended by the, uh, the Fiji Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group? Right, we developed a uh, template for, um, for application security uh, best practices, and we go into a little more technical detail in terms of what an application provider can do. So part of those in in involve uh, the way in which uh, data is encrypted and the way in which uh, integrity is performed. And we, we uh, suggest uh, specific algorithms uh, based on best practices that are used, uh, uh, that are recommended by regulators and used in industry. We recommend uh, how information should be stored, how to use uh, specific um, uh, existing and emerging uh, capabilities on mobile devices, which are broadly increasing in terms of the capabilities that they offer, including the types of security that they can provide, things like trusted hardware, um, <coughs> uh, trusted execution, uh, using those types of uh, mechanisms to uh, ensure that uh, data is safe, as well as best practices around information handling. 
What's going to be yeah, I was going to say, are digital financial services providers becoming more savvy in the way that they are being able to protect themselves against vulnerable parts of uh, their systems? I think that there is a there is a recognition that uh, that, that that DFS is a uniquely um, challenging type of uh, uh, data because of the fact that we're dealing with money and uh, so much trust relies on um, the safe handling of that data that it's really in everybody's best interest from the DFS provider to the application uh, developer through the mobile provider to really provide the most secure experience in order to keep uh, um, the usability and the security of the uh, system high for users. So I think that that message is, 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 is becoming increasingly clear. And what about regulators? What role should regulators play in ensuring the security of digital financial services? That's a great question. Uh, I think that regulators certainly have a role to play. I, I, would, uh, uh, I think that the industry uh, does, um, it's, uh, th there are a number of play w uh, ways in which uh, regulators can interface with, with industry. There's uh, industry bodies, there's mobile network operators. Uh, I think it's a good idea for regulators to know what's going on in, in, in their ecosystem and to work in concert with uh, the various providers to effectively assure security uh, for, the, uh, for the end users and for the system as a whole. And finally, what, uh, what, what's, what's your, your feeling about the digital financial services in, in terms of uh, safety and security? Do you think that, uh, that we're going to get to a stage where people will be able to trust, uh, trust their digital financial service providers implicitly? Right. Well, as a, I'm, a, I'm a security person, so I'm always looking for, uh, for, for, for ways in which things can be, uh, uh, w what weaknesses are. But I think that uh, the, the types of technologies that we have that are, that are, that are available, the, the way that uh, smartphones, for example, have become more secure and the way that um, uh, networks are shaping uh, provides me with hope that we can create uh, a system that is, uh, um, that, that is secure and, and, and that uh, users can use with confidence. So I think that it's, uh, I think if, if, if the best practices that we, uh, that we suggest in the security framework are, are, are deployed, then we will go a long way towards uh, ensuring a safer ecosystem. Okay, so not infallible, but relatively watertight. Uh, I think that we can, we can definitely do, I, I, I'll, I'll never say never because uh, that's the nature of you don't know what the threats are. And that's actually, that's a, a, a great point is that the, the framework itself is designed to be a living document. It's not designed to be uh, set in stone that these are the regulations and, and because the technology is changing, the types of attacks are changing. And so being, uh, knowing what is, uh, what is sort of state of the art in terms of attacks, in terms of vulnerabilities, in terms of the technologies is important to ensuring the best experience. So we would anticipate going back and revising such a document uh, and that regulators would use uh, some of the principles and, and adapt them to their particular environments. But we think that we've got a, a great uh, basis for, for, for uh, ensuring a safer ecosystem based on that. Well, thank you for joining us in the studio and of course at the, the Fiji Security Clinic, which I'm sure will benefit very much from your, your valuable insights and everything that you've learned over the last few years. And thank you again and hopefully we'll catch up with you again at some stage in the near future. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk with you. Kevin Butler, thanks a lot. Thank you.